welcome to Women Business Owners Alliance Learn from the Experts. We like to call ourselves the WBOA. And I'm Freda Brown, and I'm here today with... Jackie Jacobs of Jackie Jacobs Photography and EDI Games. And what is EDI Games? Uh, EDI Games is a company originally started by my husband. It stands for Ethereal Darkness Interactive. Um, and he produces video games uh, that he sells on Steam. And you're here to talk today us about how to make a video game? How to get involved in game design, development, and writing. So, if I have an idea, where do I start? Yeah, it's um, the first thing I would recommend for people is if you have a game idea, go to um, a game designer who you might know of or love, uh, specifically indie game designers are really looking for ideas sometimes and they'll post what's called a game design document on their website that you can download and you want to look over that because that's going to get into the very technical details that are needed in order for a programmer to even consider your idea as a video game. So uh, what is indie? Indie meaning independent just like indie rock it's indie game development. Oh so independent people exactly. coming up with game, de game designs there's a form right. that they have to fill out or read, anyways, to figure out what they need to do to start doing it. It's not even game. reading. You would fill it out. So you, you fill definitely it. fill it out, and it's very technical. So they're going to want to know what kind of game you're writing. Um, and if you don't know the terminology, you got to look it up. So there's things like shoot 'em up games. And yeah, that is the technical term for it. Um, massive multiplayer games. There are um, point and click adventures which is what we specialize in, but there's also casual games, which is what most people play on their cell phones. So if you don't know the terminology, look them up in order to um, get your point across, because y if you don't know what kind of game you're looking at writing, a programmer is never going to take you seriously. They're going to think that you're just throwing ideas out there, like fishing without bait. <laughs> so, so there's a difference between a programmer and a game uh, designer and a writer? Yes. Um, a game programmer actually does the coding. So all of that mumbo jumbo that you don't understand that goes into website design and computer uh, hardware systems and software systems and game development has a specific language which basically takes what we know as English and it translates it into a language that the computer can understand and then turn into actions. So it, if you have a game idea, you don't need to be a programmer. No, you absolutely do not. In fact, a lot of indie companies, they're good at one or the other. They're not good at doing both. They can either tell a really good story or they can do a really good game development. And a lot of times the reason a game doesn't get made is because the indie programmer becomes so overwhelmed by not only having to code the game but come up with the ideas and the puzzles and all of the stuff that makes the game what it is. So they're doing the duty of what AAA companies have hundreds of thousands of people doing. They, they're trying to do all by themselves. So they don't have their own marketer. They don't have their own designer. They don't have a team of people working on every game. They are just one person. So a lot of time indie gamers will entertain other ideas from people. And they'll even throw ideas out into groups and communities that they belong to to see what they can do to make that a reality. So. Okay, so how, uh, how is a, a game written? Um, a game is written, so you usually start with the game design document, and that will start with describe your main character, describe what type of game you want to do, what is the underlying story arc, if there is a story arc. Some well, games what, what don't. What is an arc? Um, so it's like a, when you tell a story, it's the beginning, the actions that happen in order to pr push the story forward, the climax of the story, and the ending, and whether that ending is left open to a possibility of a second game, or whether it has multiple options of endings depending on how the game, the player played the game. Um, so it, it's the content, really, the juice of the story. Okay, and what is the uh, market like for video games? The market, actually, I've done a lot of research on this recently, and the market is growing. In like 2011, 2010, about 90, thousand dollars was being made um, on a monthly basis and now it's like 90 billion is being made in a single year with wow. game development and the growing market is actually the most surprising thing so yes teenagers play they love those first-person shooter games um, but 
the growing market is women over the age of 50. So women who are playing casual games on their phones. So a casual game would be like? like uh, it would be like Tetris card. or, or um, yeah, card games like Solitaire, that kind of thing. That's a casual game. You can pick it up, play it as you want it, and put it aside. Um, but they're also interested in storylines. So when you have a casual game, that's great. Someone will pick it up, play it, maybe put it down, leave it for months on end. But um, the idea is that if you're doing a game with more content, because women over the age of 50, they want you to tell them a story. You know, their kids are out of the house, their husbands, you're doing whatever. They're looking for something that they now have this free time that they didn't originally have. And instead of turning to novels, they're turning to games. So you're telling them a story using these games. So uh, the most popular type of game with women over the age of 50 is those hidden object games where they're looking for a pair of scissors or something. So it's like a, a, a screen that has a number of different objects on it and they have a list of things that they're finding. But the ones that are doing the most success are the ones that are telling a story as they go. So you're finding an object and that object is then um, triggers the next section of the story. So then they're finding out what happens next and then they go to a new location and they have to find new objects or there's another puzzle mixed in there. Um, that f pushes the story forward. So I have a feeling you're about to ask me about puzzles. <laughs> um, so puzzles are like the challenges that arise in a story. So when you're watching a movie, it's really funny. I've gotten to the point where I'm watching a movie and I'm like, oh, that's like a puzzle for a game. Um, where you have to find the right key to fit in the lock or you have to find the fuse that goes into the uh, fuse box that will turn the lights on on the upstairs because it only has one for the downstairs. So you're either looking for an object or you're completing a puzzle. Sometimes they have the worst ones out there that everyone groans when you have to play them are lights out puzzles where a certain sequence of things have to be turned on or off in a very specific way in order for your puzzle to be completed. So um, they're a nightmare and they're not the great to program either <laughs> from what I understand. <laughs> um, so if you're looking at lights out puzzles, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the idea is the puzzle is an interactive experience that's part of the story. So the player feels more involved in the story than if they were just reading a book. So if you were starting out, and um, h how would you even come up with an idea? I think I'm like w way long the wrong brain side to yeah, come well up with a, a, a decide to do a. A it's story, it's so funny because my husband's very left-brained and I'm very right-brained and on our first date he said I want to have a husband and wife team that makes video games together and I laughed because it was our first date I thought I'd never have to pay up on that one ha <laughs> ha jokes on me so um, what I had to do is I started looking at walkthroughs for games that already existed and I reverse engineered a video game um, and so I basically looked at it and I said okay this is how they when they wrote it all out it's like an outline form and and I can do that I can make an outline I had to write papers in college so I would do that and um, and then I I got, became more organic and I realized I had a room driven idea so like in video games there's more terminology that I had to learn and I had to have explained by my husband it was a lot of drawings on napkins to figure things out to translate from the right brain to the left brain but now I feel like I have a good grasp on that so I act as like a conduit in between people who are right brained who want to write video games and con you know move that to the left brained people to put together but to get started just look at a game do your research what kind of game do you like play it check out what the walkthrough looks like, and then try to reverse engineer from there. Take your idea and realize, oh, they had this, you know, this is what that character did in order to move the story forward. Okay, so I have to do that too. Um, so you, you lost me with walkthrough. A walkthrough is, um, it's, a, it's a document that's been written about the game, so that way if you're playing the game and you can't figure out one of the puzzles, a lot of people are like, oh, I, instead of giving up, they go to the internet, because the internet exists. And they go, oh, I'm stuck on this part, what do I do? And um, there's like a whole walkthrough. It's like the entire game laid out in an outline form so you can read it and figure out, oh, red has to go to green and green has to go to blue and blue has to go to yellow or whatever the puzzle is. They can read the solutions and sometimes they even include screenshots from the game. So well, that's a hint for anybody that wants <laughs> to play a game. Exactly. <laughs> you when, you get, when you get worry. stuck at one Every point. Every game. Every game has a walkthrough. I have never run into a game that I could not find a walkthrough for by Googling it. If someone's played it, there's a walkthrough. 
Terrific. So uh, learning what, what a walkthrough is would be the first step to doing your own game. Right. Or if you, I would say the first step would play a game so you know what, what is in a game. Mm -hmm. um, and then look for the walkthrough of that game and see how they laid it out so you could understand it. And then when you're studying that, then you get the idea of how it needs to be laid out in order for a programmer to understand your idea. Well, that's great. <laughs> that, I think you gave us some valuable tips and information um, that I certainly didn't know about. <laughs> and I hope other people have, have learned that. And if you want to learn more about uh, gaming and building your own um, game or learning how to program or learning just anything about making games better for you in your life, uh, visit Jackie, uh, go on to the WBOA.org website and look up Jackie Jacobs. And if you have any other questions, uh, move on from there. So thank you, Jackie. It's been wonderful talking to you. No problem. And we do a uh, weekly do post online uh, a chance for people to ask us questions. Oh, excellent. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome.